Huawei just unveiled Flex.ai with a claim designed to shock the AI industry. The company says this software can turn a scattered pool of existing GPUs and NPUs into what it calls an analog AI chip, delivering up to 1,000 times more effective performance than NVIDIA's chips in real-world usage. That claim only makes sense if you stop thinking about performance as peak flops or raw silicon speed and start thinking about performance as how much useful AI work a system actually completes over time. Huawei introduced Flex.ai as a container-based orchestration platform that can slice GPU and MPU cards into virtual units with up to 10% granularity, pool idle resources across entire clusters, and raise average accelerator utilization from roughly 30 to 40% to nearly 70%. Built on Kubernetes and set to be open sourced through Huawei's model engine developer community, Flexed AI is positioned as a direct attempt to expose and eliminate massive compute waste inside modern AI infrastructure. At the highest level, Flexed AI targets a problem that dominates real AI deployments, but is rarely discussed outside engineering teams. Chronic accelerator underutilization. In most production environments, GPUs and MPUs get allocated but they rarely run at full capacity. Training workloads often stall while waiting on data pipelines, gradient synchronization, or communication steps, and inference workloads arrive in bursts and are frequently memory bound, leaving large parts of the device idle. When training and inference share the same cluster, fragmentation gets even worse, and the result is that average utilization across real systems often falls well below 50%, meaning a huge portion of installed, powered, and cooled silicon is simply not producing useful AI output. Flexed AI goes straight at that inefficiency by changing how accelerators are exposed to workloads. At the hardware level, most GPUs and NPUs are built as large monolithic devices that expose fixed pools of compute units, high bandwidth memory, caches, and interconnect bandwidth, and traditional schedulers treat each accelerator as an indivisible unit, where a job either takes the whole card or waits. That model works if one job can fully saturate the device, but it fails badly for inference multi-tenant systems and mixed workloads. Flex.ai replaces that rigid model with fine-grained accelerator virtualization, meaning instead of assigning whole devices, it dynamically slices compute, memory, and bandwidth into smaller virtual instances that can be created, resized, merged, or destroyed at runtime. Each physical accelerator can be split into multiple logical partitions that appear to workloads as independent devices with guaranteed minimum resources letting small jobs share one accelerator without wasting capacity, and letting larger jobs consume resources across multiple devices when one card is not enough. Conceptually, this resembles NVIDIA's multi-instance GPU approach, but Huawei's positioning is different because it operates at the orchestration layer rather than being locked to one hardware architecture, and it is meant to work across heterogeneous accelerators. That matters in clusters that include Huawei Ascend NPUs, older GPUs, export-restricted NVIDIA parts, and other accelerators, because Flex.ai aims to treat all of them as a single unified resource pool instead of isolated islands of compute. To make slicing viable, isolation between virtual slices is a critical technical requirement, because without strict isolation, Contention for shared caches, memory controllers, or interconnects would create unpredictable performance. Flex.ai tries to enforce isolation using runtime telemetry, hardware performance counters, and driver level hooks, so the system can cap resource usage per slice and prevent one workload from starving others even when multiple jobs share the same physical device. Above that virtualization layer sits high scheduler, the core intelligence of Flex AI, and it is not a one-time dispatcher that assigns resources and walks away. It runs as a continuous control loop that monitors the entire cluster in real time, ingesting telemetry from every node, including utilization, memory pressure, interconnect congestion, execution latency, and job queue depth. 
then making incremental scheduling decisions instead of large, disruptive reallocations. One of High Scheduler's most important capabilities is heterogeneous workload co-scheduling, because AI clusters rarely run one job type. Long-running training workloads coexist with short-lived, latency-sensitive inference tasks, where training is sustained and compute-heavy, while inference is bursty and often memory-bound. Traditional schedulers struggle to mix these efficiently, so they isolate workloads and waste capacity. But Flexed AI explicitly models workload characteristics and can place inference tasks into unused compute slices on accelerators already running training jobs, as long as latency and isolation constraints stay satisfied. To do that, it needs predictive scheduling rather than static allocation. So high scheduler estimates how a workload's resource usage will evolve over time. Using historical execution data, runtime profiling, and model metadata, predicting compute intensity, memory footprint, synchronization behavior, and communication patterns. Then, deciding whether two workloads can safely share hardware, or whether exclusivity is needed to avoid interference. Flexdial AI also targets another growing issue in AI systems, models that exceed the memory capacity of a single accelerator. Traditionally, this requires explicit model parallelism in frameworks like PyTorch or TensorFlow. Flex.ai does not replace framework parallelism, but it adds an orchestration level ability to span workloads across multiple devices and present them as a unified logical resource, reducing fragmentation by allowing partial utilization of several accelerators instead of blocking on one large contiguous allocation. Interconnect awareness is essential here because spanning devices only helps if communication costs stay manageable. So High Scheduler incorporates topology awareness by understanding which accelerators share fast links and which communicate over slower paths, then accounting for both available compute and data movement costs. So it avoids placements that would erase gains through excessive communication overhead. The Kubernetes Foundation is deliberate because Huawei is not trying to replace Kubernetes, it is extending it with custom resource definitions and scheduling plugins. So accelerators become first class, sliceable resources within the Kubernetes control plane, allowing Flex.ai to integrate with existing containerized AI workflows, CI pipelines, monitoring systems, and operational tooling which reduces friction and lets organizations adopt it incrementally. The open source decision also matters technically because open access allows operators to inspect, modify and extend scheduling logic. And scheduling policies depend heavily on workload mix, hardware characteristics and operational goals, meaning a training heavy research cluster has very different needs than an inference heavy serving environment. An open control makes tuning possible instead of forcing a one-size-fits-all scheduler. Huawei often points to a roughly 30% increase in average utilization as a realistic result. And that increase comes from several optimizations stacking together rather than one magic trick. Fine-grained slicing reduces wasted capacity. Co-scheduling improves concurrency. Dynamic rebalancing cuts idle time and multi-device execution lowers queuing delays for large models. Each gain is modest alone, but at scale, they compound into much higher sustained utilization. The more dramatic 1,000 times faster claim appears when these gains are measured over long periods. And it is not about per operation speed or latency. It is a throughput argument. A poorly utilized cluster completes far less work over weeks or months than a system that keeps hardware consistently busy, even if the underlying accelerators are slower on paper. And in that framing, software-driven efficiency becomes a true performance multiplier. Comparisons with NVIDIA are unavoidable because NVIDIA dominates peak performance through advanced silicon, high bandwidth interconnects, and a mature CUDA-centered ecosystem. And Flex.ai does not challenge that dominance at the kernel or instruction set level. 
Compute operations still run at the same speed they would without flexed AI. Memory bandwidth and physical latency do not magically change, and all the gains come from better scheduling, better packing, and reduced idle time, meaning flexed AI is about delivered performance, not peak performance. There is also a clear parallel with NVIDIA's own direction, since NVIDIA acquired Run Dial AI to improve GPU utilization in multi-tenant clusters, acknowledging that scheduling efficiency is becoming a real bottleneck, but Huawei's approach differs in emphasis. Flex AI is positioned as open source and designed for heterogeneous hardware environments, reflecting the reality of Chinese AI infrastructure, where the newest NVIDIA hardware is not always available. Flexed AI also fits Huawei's broader hardware strategy because Huawei has been scaling its Ascend NPU line as a domestic alternative to NVIDIA accelerators. And even if Ascend chips do not match NVIDIA's best raw metrics, they become more competitive when system level efficiency improves, making Flex.AI a force multiplier that extracts more value from every deployed accelerator. Of course, there are real technical limits. Fine-grained accelerator isolation is difficult, especially when multiple workloads compete for shared caches and memory controllers. Predictive scheduling can misjudge behavior and cause interference or performance drops. Dynamic migration adds overhead and complexity, and the gains depend heavily on accurate telemetry, fast control loops, and precise policy tuning. Fault tolerance is also harder in a dynamic system because when workloads are constantly rebalanced, node failures must be handled without corrupting accelerator state. And while Flex.ai builds on Kubernetes health checks and restarts, extending those mechanisms to partial GPU and NPU slices requires tight driver and runtime integration. Still, from an architectural standpoint, Flex.ai represents a shift towards software-defined AI infrastructure where hardware becomes a pool of abstract resources rather than a fixed set of devices, and performance optimization moves from chip design to orchestration and runtime intelligence, similar to how software-defined approaches transformed networking and storage. In the context of China's AI ecosystem, this strategy is especially significant because it reduces dependence on leading edge imported hardware by extracting more value from existing and domestically available accelerators, and it plays to Huawei's strength in large-scale systems engineering rather than pure silicon leadership. It does not erase NVIDIA's advantages in raw performance or ecosystem maturity, but it offers an alternative path for scaling AI capability under hardware constraints. So here's the real question. If Huawei can extract this much performance without new silicon, are export controls actually slowing China down? Or are they forcing it to innovate faster? Comment your thoughts below. And if you want the real story behind the world's fastest moving tech and AI breakthroughs, make sure to like and subscribe to Evolving AI for daily coverage.